bashing is allowed. Thank you very much. Uh, of course, needle fasciotomy is the best. But before I want to try and convince you, first I want to meet you, my good friend David. David, he enjoys driving his sports car, cycling, skiing, dirt bike riding. That's all on his website. And he learned to fly in the RAF. And he likes to race on his dirt bike. And he actually raced 7,000 British pounds by, uh, by going through South Africa. So what can you conclude other than David loves his toys, his gadgets, his thrills. And that is, of course, the reason why David embraces collagenase. And of course, there is something to say for collagenase. It is minimally invasive. It is miraculous, maybe even sexy. It has been beautifully developed. It is strongly investigated and superbly marketed. However, it is expensive. You have recurrences. PIP contractures are more difficult to treat. And you have these adverse events. And here you see one of my patients who had a bursitis following injection of, with collagenase in one of his fingers. I've never heard it before, so it may be worth a case report. And already in 2010, Thomas Kaplan, who is a firm believer of collagenase, stated in a forum, I think that the advantages of collagenase injections versus aponeurotomy are yet to be fully elucidated. And I couldn't agree more. I'm just going to give you the key points of needle fasciotomy. It is the least invasive treatment modality for Duprotrans disease, I'm convinced. It's very effective, and its effectiveness is just as high as limited fasciotomy and the lower tubiana classes. Its effectiveness is similar to collagenase. Its complication rate is low, and patients are able to resume most activities within hours to days after treatment. Satisfaction rate is very high, and recurrence rate, okay, it's relatively high, but retreatment, if desired, is always possible, and often as effective as first treatment. And the treatment is cheap compared to limited fasciectomy and collagenase. Now, let's go into the hard figures, because that is what it's all about. These are the recurrence figures that we produced in, in our RCT, and they are actually similar to the figures that Guy Fouchet produced. 65% after three years and 85% after five years. But you have to be convinced that the definition we used is different than the 30 degree definition that Clay Paymer has just alluded to because this 30 degrees uh, definition is an increase of the total passive extension of facet compared to result six results. So not a single joint, but the whole ray. And Gary Pess had looked, has, has used the definition that is used in the collagenase studies to look at his results. And he found 20% recurrence rate at MCP and 65% in PIP in the successfully released joints. And if the joints were not successfully released, the figures were 25% and 67% after three years. Well, if we put this in a little table, then you can see that at the MCP joint, recurrence rate at three years, 20% for PNF, 27% for collagenase. That's the definition used by Gary. Thank you, Gary. And this is for the PIP, 65% for PNF, 56% PNF. Very similar, isn't it? So my conclusion is, Percutaneous needle fasciotomy is quick and cheap. Recovery is fast, satisfaction is high. Efficacy is similar to LF in the lower tibianas, similar to collagenase. Durability is comparable to collagenase, and it can be repeated. And tomorrow we will tell you how often. So, David, Charlie, thank you very much.